This is a short video on surface plasmons and their applications presented by Sridhu Verma and Tinish Bhattacharya. Now let's have a recap of the basic laws concerning reflection and refraction. Firstly is the Snell's law which basically gives the relation between the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction when an electromagnetic wave is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2. Second is the total internal reflection which basically says that a light wave might get reflected back if it is traveling from a denser medium to a lighter medium given that its angle of incidence is greater than a certain critical angle which is given as follows. Now let's come to even incident waves. It is produced when the light wave traveling from a denser medium to lighter medium has its angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. Firstly, if we see an exponential decay of amplitude in the direction perpendicular to the interface and a propagation in the direct direction parallel to the interface. It is also to be noted that in evanescent waves the energy is not lost, only that the amplitude decays. Now coming to the difference between surface plasmons and evanescent waves. Firstly, it is to be noted that while evanescent waves decays only in one of the medium that is a lighter medium, the surface plasmon has its electric field decaying in both the mediums. For a surface plasmon to exist, there are two requirements that, is to be, that are to be satisfied. Firstly, the two mediums must have a opposite electric permittivity. Secondly, the frequency of the wave must be close to surface plasmon polariton. Broadly speaking, a surface plasmon is a traveling wave oscillation of electrons that can be excited in the surface of certain metals with the right material properties. It is also to be noted that surface plasmon only ac exists in the transverse magnetic mode. Now coming to the general equations governing the working of surface plasmons, we have the general expression for E1 and H1 as follows. Now by Gauss's law, we have the divergence of D1 and D2, the displacement vectors of bo on both mediums, equal to zero, since the free charge density is zero. And from the fourth Maxwell's equation, the curl of H1 is equal to the partial derivative of displacement vector on mag medium 1. And this impl is implied for both the mediums, since the current density is taken as zero. Now from these relations, we have the relation between the two permittivities on of both mediums as epsilon 1 by kz1 equal to epsilon 2 by kz2. Now in the image as we see that the electric field decays exponentially in both mediums which is a characteristic property of surface plasmon, we obtain the following relation that either of kz1 and kz or kz2 have to be negative. This also implies that either of the permittivities of the mediums have to be negative. Now coming to the general dispersion relation we have as follows. This holds true for all electromagnetic wave. Now this k square equal to kx square plus kz square is gives the relation between the net wave vector along with respect to its directional wave vectors along x and z directions. Now since the boundary conditions have to be satisfied for all points along the interface medium of the mediums we have kx1 equal to kx2 and also since the frequency remains the same it gives us this resulting equation. Now let us analyze the dispersion relation that we just received for surface plasmons. In the earlier slides we got this relation for kx. Now since the surface plasmon is propagating in the x direction kx has to be real. Also we saw that exactly one of the relative permittivities that is the one corresponding to the metal has to be negative which makes the numerator in the square root negative. This implies that for kx to be real the denominator also has to be negative. What this says is that the absolute permittivity of the metal which has a negative sign has to be larger than the absolute permittivity of the dielectric that we are using. Now for a metal we know the relation between the relative permittivity and its plasma frequency. Using the above expressions, the two expressions, the one for metals relative permittivity and the one for kx, we get the following inequality where omega is smaller than omega p upon root of 1 plus epsilon r1 value on this RHS is also called omega sp. Now an important point to note here is that not only the omega should be smaller than the omega sp, it should also not be very small because in that case the decay lengths become very large in the metal and the surface plasmon cannot be supported. Curve compares the dispersion relation of a normal electromagnetic wave and that of a surface plasmon. Now here as we can see for a surface plasmon the value omega upon omega p, the ratio, saturates to a value of around 0 0.7. This follows from our earlier discussion where we showed that 
surface plasmons cannot exist for a frequency above than this value. Now let's analyze the group and phase velocities for a surface plasmon. Now the expression for phase velocity is Vp is equal to omega by k. By putting the values we get this expression. Now both these velocities go to zero as the frequency approaches omega sp. This case is called surface plasmon polariton and the surface plasmon created is stationary. Now let us discuss the generation of a surface plasmon. From the earlier slides we got this relation which is the dispersion relation for a surface plasmon. Now if we write root over epsilon r1 as the refractive index of the first material we get this expression. Also by simple geometry kx can be written as omega n1 by c sin theta i where omega n1 by c is the magnitude of the total propagation vector. Now from these two expressions we see an anomaly. The expression root over epsilon r2 upon epsilon r1 plus epsilon r2 will always be greater than 1 as, a as in denominator one term is negative which will lead to a value smaller than epsilon r2. But in the second expression we have sin theta i which is ideally always smaller than 1. So for generation of a surface plasmon on, a su uh, on an interface we need the angle of incidence for which sin theta i becomes greater than 1. Now from our earlier studies we know that this is only possible for evanescent waves. So for generating a surface plasmon evanescent waves are necessary as is shown in the figure. One of the most interesting applications of surface plasmons is superlens. The content for this section of the presentation was taken from our earlier video. Superlenses find their applications in biomedical field and nanoscale field where the images from a normal camera don't work. Near field is used for the creation of images across a metal film in super lenses. The glass prism shown in this figure is used to create evanescent waves to create surface plasmons on the surface of the metal, gold in this case. The plasmon thus formed is captured by the microscope objective. Surface plasmon as we have seen earlier, as omega tends to omega sp, both the phase and group velocities tend to zero. And in this case the plasmon is called a surface plasmon polariton. What this means is that the information remains stationary and can be captured efficiently by the objective. This results in no blurring and is also called as perfect imaging.